from the research bench to the patient's bedside, this is Bench to Bedside with your host, Vice Chancellor and Director of the University of Kansas Cancer Center, Dr. Roy Jensen. Despite incredible advances in cancer therapeutics, brain cancer remains difficult to treat. Glioblastoma, a type of brain cancer, is one of the most complex and treatment-resistant cancers. The five-year survival rate for people with glioblastoma is less than 20%. Scientists, clinicians, and members of our community are working together to improve therapies to help people with brain cancer live longer and with a better quality of life. Good morning. I'm Dr. Roy Jensen, Vice Chancellor and Director of the University of Kansas Cancer Center. And with me today is Dr. David Akavan, a physician scientist studying brain cancer, and Matt Anthony, founder of the Head for the Cure Foundation. Please, uh, we're going to be discussing uh, brain cancer research, and I want to thank both of you uh, for joining. Um, thank you, Dr. Matt, um, could you uh, start off by telling us about your connection uh, to brain cancer? Sure, Roy, thank you. And, and it's great to be here, Dr. Jensen, Dr. Akavan. So we started the Head for the Cure Foundation, gosh, uh, uh, 19 years ago. Uh, the foundation itself actually, the 501c3 about 15 years ago, but we first did a 5K after, shortly after my brother passed from a glioblastoma, uh, my brother Chris who was diagnosed in uh, late 2000, passed in uh, early 2003. His idea to do a 5K, Chris was a runner and an athlete and, and passed away quite young in his mid thirties. And his idea to do a 5K and we did it that first year. And I should mention Chris is a KU grad as well. Um, and had, had uh, the idea was to uh, remember him uh, to raise awareness for this little known and uh, under-researched disease, brain cancer, specifically glioblastoma, and inspire hope along the way. And, and that first year, 300 people, $20,000 uh, uh, gave rise to something that we wanted to continue. And uh, the next year was bigger, and the next year bigger yet. And, and uh, some five years later, we established the foundation and, and have grown ever since. So it's been a, it's been a, a, uh, a labor of love, I must say. And my brother Chris still animates everything we do, but the thousands and thousands of people that have been helped along the way, uh, it's really about them. And it's about uh, directing funding to research at, at KU and, and, and elsewhere to ultimately eradicate this disease, give people more hope and, and lengthen their lives. So it's, uh, and over the years, gosh, uh, our Kansas City event, we now do events in 30 cities, but our KC event is our signature. KU is our uh, is our partner in so many ways. We've 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 raised close to six million dollars just from our Kansas City event, almost twenty five million around the country. But of that six million, we've netted about four and a half million, and nearly two has gone to the the, the brain tumor efforts at at KU. And we feel in many ways like we're just beginning. So that's uh, that's going to continue for sure. Well, that's that's an incredible story, Matt. Um, so, so you mentioned the, the phrase uh, brain tumors, and I think one thing that many people don't understand is that there are actually many types of, of brain tumors. Um, Dr. Agavan, could you tell us, are, are all brain tumors cancerous? Well, thank you for having me here, I'm Dr. Jensen, uh, uh, Mr. Anthony. So there's different types of brain tumors. There's uh, primary brain tumors that arise from the brain, and they can be um, very slow growing, not aggressive at all. People can have a quality of life living with them, but they're managed. And there's more aggressive ones um, like glioblastoma, which is considered the most aggressive and it's a stage four. And then there's other cancers that can go to the brain called brain metastases that can arise elsewhere in other malignancies like breast cancer can go to the brain and other cancers. And all of them have their own types of therapies. Uh, but again, the brain is a very difficult area to treat with these uh, um, with these different types of brain tumors, given it's a, um, you can't just keep chopping away brain. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Dr. Akavan, let's uh, talk about the the deadliest of of all uh, brain tumors, and that's glioblastoma. Um, exactly what is it, and uh, why is it so difficult uh, to treat? The glioblastoma arises from the astrocytes, which is a type of cell in the brain. 
it is uh, um, it is a highly infiltrative tumor, so it's not simple to just cut out the tumor. Oftentimes when surgeons cut it out, there's smaller cancer cells that have infiltrated the normal brain that is difficult um, uh, um, to remove. And then the other issue is with a lot of the therapies that we give for other cancers, such as breast cancer and other cancers, um, they're given orally or intravenously. These can't cross the blood or brain barrier um, to get to the brain tumor site. Um, and so a lot of our um, drugs that work very well really can't um, get into the brain very well. And, uh, and the immune system um, that is often uses, that we can use with drugs to activate the immune system, antibody-based therapies have a difficult time getting in the brain as well. So a lot of our um, armamentarium is limited to get into the brain area. Mm -hmm. So Matt, you're what I like to term a, a, a serial cancer advocate. Uh, you, <laughs> you founded uh, not only uh, Head for the Cure, which obviously funds uh, brain cancer research, but you also started uh, Shave to Save, which raises funds for Kansas City Hope Lodge. Uh, could you tell us uh, more about that aspect uh, of your advocacy sure. and, and specifically what led you to um, uh, launch that uh, that effort. Well, it is it is interesting, you know, the, the different stages of my life that uh, that have sort of intersected with cancer, and uh, um, you know, some frightening, uh, of course, scary, but but also uh, inspiring. And and uh, shave to save was really my first, I guess, formal effort in into uh, supporting people with with cancer, and specifically the Hope Lodge, and that. That also, uh, I, I circle back to my brother. You know, we do things together, and and uh, I've always believed that working together is better than working alone. So, this we didn't come up with the idea, but we did we did launch it. So way back in '02, you know, Chris was in the later stages of of, of his treatment. Um, we got word that there was an attempt to do something to involve the corporate community around the idea of of uh, what happens through chemo when people lose their hair and how can people more identify with that. And so uh, the American Cancer Society uh, was, uh, had done this in another city and the local chapter was considering something similar. So, so we kind of responded to a, for a call for interest and, and I re looked over to Chris and I said, hey, uh, if we do this, we've got to go all in and let's lead it. And so that means we've got to be a, a bit public and uh, and, and he was pretty quiet about his disease, but if but if he could help somebody, he he would do that. You know, I, he would subscribe to a great quote that I from Gandhi, who said that that uh, our our uh, uh, service to others is the rent we pay for our time here on Earth. And and uh, I've always believed that, and Chris did too. So so that first year, uh, I stepped up. Chris shaved my head. He was already uh, had lost all his hair from all of his treatment, and. And it motivated people to uh, to donate to to this specific cause, to Hope Lodge, and in that first year, I think we raised about sixty thousand dollars. And and last year, or excuse me, this year, just celebrated our twentieth year. I chaired it for a couple of years and was uh, recognized this year as honorary chairperson. My good friend Gary Lezak, has uh, I convinced him to MC it uh, nineteen years ago, and he's done so ever since. And 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 KU, like most of the things that I'm involved with, with uh, in the cancer world, KU is a partner, and that certainly is the case with Shave to Save, as it is with Head for the Cure. So, so two uh, two different uh, types of efforts, but but both celebrations of the spirit and energy of people fighting cancer and the alignment that philanthropy has with science to ultimately make a difference. And 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 that's what Shave's about. That's what Head for the Cure is about. And I must say that that I I, I think that. Uh, I guess the third leg of my stool is I, I'm also a, a cancer survivor. Uh, midway through the, the launch of Shape to Save and the maturity of Head for the Cure in, in 09 and 10, I, I was diagnosed with a with head and neck cancer, uh, throat cancer actually, stage four throat cancer, and and uh, battled through that myself and uh, came through on the other side after uh, after the trifecta of chemo, radiation, and surgery, and and uh, it has given me perspective to people fighting cancer of all forms, and and helps to uh, motivate me to continue to, to to do what I can to to help others. So all of these experiences, and and uh, I think it's true with everyone that faces cancer in their lives, and few of us escape this life without some connection through a family member, a loved one, a coworker, a friend. 
that is battling some form of cancer. And, and to experience it in those forms for me has been inspiring and, and I guess motivational. I, 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 another thing I believe in is when, when you encounter something and somebody asks for your help, uh, the, the best thing you can do is to show up for them and uh, not create burden for them by telling them what, what they can do, what, what you can do to help them, but rather just show up for them. And that's what Shave's about, that's what Hefty Cure's about. And also knowing that by partnering with KU, we know that the funds raised and the awareness lifted will be directed through the best organization possible. And, and that's KU Cancer Center, who's uh, authentic and genuine and doing the right things to ultimately extend life and save lives. Well, thanks so much, Matt. That's that's just an incredible story. I, I was sitting here thinking we could probably do an entire season of uh, Bench to Bedside just on the Matt Anthony story, but oh, uh, oh, uh, yes. but that's 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 right. great. So I'm going to turn back now uh, to brain cancer, and as as you well know, um, research in brain cancers and in, is incredibly under. Uh, funded and uh, Head for the Cure and a number of other uh, organizations that fund brain cancer are, are all really vital in our quest to find better treatments and, and more cures. And so uh, joining us in the studio uh, today um, is uh, David Akavan, who is a physician uh, scientist and Head for the Cure founder, uh, uh, Matt Anthony, and we're going to be discussing uh, David's uh, research and in, in really uh, breakthrough research in, in brain cancer research. And also joining us is Alexis uh, Del Cid, who's going to be answering uh, your uh, questions. And please remember to share uh, this link with people you think might benefit from our discussion. Use the hashtag bench uh, to bedside. So David, you are a radiation uh, oncologist, which is one of the ways that we treat uh, uh, glioblastoma. Uh, but you study uh, immunotherapy, which is a form of treatment that uses a, a patient's own immune system uh, to fight cancer and other diseases, uh, I might add. And, and that's really quite a, a combination of of skill sets there. How did you become interested uh, in uh, the uh, immunotherapy field? Well, I first started my PhD in glioblastoma many years ago, and our first interest uh, was to, um, I was drawn to this very complex problem is, you know, it's still incurable now. And our approach back then during my PhD was to give small molecule inhibitors. And, and we did much like a bench to bedside approach where you'd, um, you have a clinical trial, you give the patient the oral um, drug, and then you biopsy the tumor and then see can the drug get to the target um, and, uh, and is it uh, having any effect. And then we were able to figure out that small molecule inhibitors aren't really ineffective in that manner and, uh, and better approaches are needed. And uh, then later on with, in my radiation oncology training, um, I was introduced to um, Dr. Um, Brown, Christine Brown at City of Hope, and she um, um, was involved and currently involved in cell therapy trials, which are engineered immunotherapy trials for brain tumors. And it's a very natural fit is the standard of care for um, brain tumors right now is, um, is radiation. And um, even with that, it's still incurable. We know from um, even mouse models that mice with an intact immune system are actually very effective when you give them radiation versus mice that don't have an intact immune system. So you know that there's a strong interplay between the two, and that's just being understood now in other cancers as well where we combine radiation and immunotherapy as well. Mm -hmm. So with the exciting clinical trials going on right now with um, immunotherapy, specifically cell-based immunotherapy in, uh, in uh, GBM um, is what um, got me jump-started um, in that approach. I see. Alexis, it sounds like we have our first question. We have a bunch of questions. This is a, this is a topic that a lot of people have questions about. Um, the first one is from Pauline. Pauline wants to know, she writes, love the Shave to Save program. What does Hope Lodge do? So uh, uh, maybe, Matt, if you, if you want to take sure. that or, OK. You want me to? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll start. So Hope Lodge is a is a residential facility that uh, provides a, a uh, when, when folks come in for long-term treatment uh, and they need a place to, uh, to convalesce, 
during their treatment, whether it, uh, oftentimes it could be it could be a bone marrow transplant, it could be something that requires extensive uh, treatment cycle, uh, uh, mostly at, at KU. Uh, Hope Lodge is a place of comfort for uh, for the patient, for their family members, their caregivers, uh, a place that uh, that they find other other support. So it's a it's an amazing facility. Meals are provided, care is provided and mostly peace and comfort is provided and it's quite a remarkable place and it's it's provided at no cost as well so so it's run by the, the american cancer uh, uh, society's local chapter in partnership with with ku so a uh, pretty amazing place and that's you know so much of of uh, of uh, the support for cancer programs is to provide a a quality of life for people that are that are undergoing treatment that are that are battling the disease and it's that's a, it's a nice balance while uh, dr akavan and, and i love what he's sharing about uh, his uh, his mission to cure glioblastoma and while that's happening hope lodge provides a, a place of comfort for people undergoing treatment yeah so just to add to that um you know the catchment area for the ku cancer center um is over 90,000 square miles. And so, you know, we have people that come in um, uh, for therapy uh, that live, you know, five, six hours away uh, from us. And the Hope Lodge has is, is really been an, an essential uh, partner uh, with us. And um, I think at any one time, usually 60 to 70 percent of the residents at Hope Lodge uh, are being treated at the KU Cancer Center. So they're a, a critical part of, of, of what we do. Sounds like we have another question. Mary has a question for Dr. Akavan. Um, what is immunotherapy? Can you explain how it actually works? Are you injecting cells into the patient's blood? For, for, for regular people who are watching, is there a simple way you can explain oh. something so complex to right. the rest of us? So there's different types of immunotherapy. The most simple form that's currently in clinical practice is antibody-based immunotherapy. And antibodies um, can target cancer cells and they'll, go, and they'll coat a cancer cell. And then what causes the killing of the cancer cells, the immune cells, like the T cells and other cells that can see this cancer cell coated with antibodies and they'll come in and kill it. Um, the issue with brain tumors is oftentimes the antibodies um, that are given can't get across into the brain. And once they're in the brain, it's really, there's really a lack of T cells in the brain to see these antibodies if they do get there and actually kill. And actually kill. So the next evolution in technology is to move beyond antibodies and just take the T cells and engineer the T cells to express the antibody. Now it's called a CAR T cell. And now the T cell has the ability to target the tumor and also to kill the tumor because the T cell has a potent killing ability. And that's what we're working, that's the new iteration that we're working on now in clinical trials. Laura wants to know, what are the symptoms of brain cancer? Are there specific symptoms of brain cancer? Uh, it's, um, the symptoms would be um, broad and whether it be a brain cancer or a low grade brain tumor, it would be pressure in the head. Like a headache? Yeah, morning headaches, okay. nausea, vomiting, um, or would be the most common symptoms. And depending on where it's located in the brain, you may have focal deficits, like a weakness in an arm or a leg, something completely out the ordinary that someone wouldn't normally have. Would that be the point when you, you would say see a doctor with the weakness in the arm? Because a lot of people have headaches in the morning. And if you Google it, it can tell you a bunch of things. Or if, you, if you're watching, you think, oh, gosh, I have a headache. Do yeah, if something's cancer? very persistent yeah. and out of the ordinary, um, where it progresses to vomiting and nausea, then that would be Call uh, the doctor. A, 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 a beyond your normal headache. Yeah. Hi. So David is a... As a follow-up to our earlier discussion, um, immunotherapy has been proven to be extraordinarily effective in the treatment of blood cancers. And um, solid tumors like brain cancer uh, have proven to be a, a bit uh, trickier in terms of adapting that approach. Um, could you tell us about uh, your research in immunotherapy and why it is um, a bit different um, in, in terms of its specific approach uh, to solid tumors. Absolutely. So the issue with solid tumors is that the targets on the cancer cell, not all of the cancer cells have this target. About 10% may have target A, 20% target B. So one, uh, one, one engineered cell therapy won't be able to target all of them. So you have to find a way to figure out this complex um, um, tumor 
patient specific may also be an issue, um, and how to engineer the T cell to target all these targets. The other issue with solid tumors, especially brain tumors, is that they're, uh, in the brain, they're immune privileged. It's hard to get any intravenous therapy into the brain. So now the next generation is to go ahead and design the cell therapy and inject it directly in the brain. The other issue with solid tumors is um, brain tumors, they're uh, very um, nutrient deficient. And if you take a patient's brain tumor, and one of the hallmarks of the glioblastoma is a necrotic core. Um, the cancer cell has proliferated so rapidly, it's soaked up all the nutrients, and now it's necrotic. How can we expect to put an immune cell and survive that harsh microenvironment? So the next iteration is also in my laboratory is to engineer these immune cells to metabolic, it's called metabolic engineering, where you can engineer them to perhaps survive the harsh tumor microenvironment. A lot of people com uh, compare it to like a Ford Model T. It's a very simple cell therapy, and we're adding all these different bells and whistles on it to be able to survive the tumor microenvironment, um, to be able to target multiple targets on the cancer cell. Um, so it's a very exciting time. It's almost uh, like, a, like, um, um, like a very much an engineering discipline, how we modify it. Mm -hmm. So in, in your approach, are, are you um, adding back the immune cells to the blood system or directly to the central nervous system? Um, so the new standard for brain tumors in clinical trials, uh, as multiple institutions have taken this up, is for brain tumors to infuse them directly in the brain. So we um, are uh, the, the backbone of what we're doing in mice and later on in humans, we take the mouse own T cells we engineer them with a virus that could target the T cell and express these antibodies on the T cell. And then we inject them directly in the brain in a mouse having the brain tumor. And we evaluate, um, can the tumor eradicate the target? Um, can the T cell eradicate, the CAR T cell eradicate the target? And, and, uh, and then that will use this technology we're developing in our laboratory to move that into clinical trials when ready. Mm -hmm. Sounds like we have another question. We do. We've had. We're getting several. Uh, this is touching. This is touching a lot of people. Um, we're getting a few different questions. People are asking in different ways what the risk factors are for brain cancer. The main risk factors, and this kind of goes hand in hand with Kathy. Also wants to know: Is brain cancer genetic? Is there a gene to be tested for? So, what are the risk factors, and is it genetic? Uh, unfortunately, we don't know all the different causes for glioblastoma. Um, it is not genetic, you know, um, people can have it. Typically it's a disease of older age, although unfortunately it happens to people, sometimes people of younger age as well. Um, in some brain tumors, um, there is genetic uh, predispos predisposition to that and some familial type inheritance pattern. So it can happen in lower grade tumors, but in glioblastoma it is not, it's not genetic. It's hard to predict who's gonna get it. And, and there's no specific- No gene? Gene that we can test for uh, that will predict a um, you know, you, you will get brain uh, glioblastoma. Yes, yes that's so unfortunately. You, you might have touched on then, David's question is, if one of your parents had brain cancer, does that mean you're more at risk? It would be, uh, um, it's really hard to predict that. There's, I would say, you're not, the person's not at more risk. Okay, so yeah. David, or, or who, whoever he's referring to, doesn't need to worry. Correct. Any more than the regular person would worry about this. Correct. So uh, you joined us from the City of Hope which is uh, a National Cancer Institute designated comprehensive cancer center um, in Duarte, uh, California. Um, what drew you uh, to coming to the University of Kansas Cancer Center and, and joining our faculty? So I'm very excited to be here. I joined here about a little over two years ago. And, uh, and my passion has always been in brain tumors, whether it was my PhD or later my postdoctoral training at City of Hope. Um, with the cell therapy training and the uh, radiation oncology. And uh, when I first learned about KU and, and the, their interest and investment in brain tumor treatment, whether it's our new proton therapy center that we're building and uh, protons are a type of radiation where it's very, uh, um, very exact um, compared to x-rays and you could really avoid any um, normal tissue injury and it's really appropriate for brain tumors now that we have our proton center. Uh, it's, it's gonna really help benefit patients. Beyond that, our cell therapy um, interest, the um, cancer center has invested heavily in that. And that essentially it's um, very fancy large machines that can grow up these uh, immune cells um, that are um, safe for patient delivery. So uh, we've invested heavily in it. I think we're really positioning ourselves to be a world leader in brain tumor research in the next coming years. I'm really excited to be here. Okay. 
So the University of Kansas Cancer Center's decade-long uh, partnership with Head for the Cure, uh, I think, is really a fantastic example of how scientists and philanthropists working together uh, can find uh, better cancer treatments. Um, and, and Matt and, and, and David uh, Akavan, uh, uh, what, what have we accomplished uh, over the last uh, 10 years uh, through the partnership uh, with uh, Head for the Cure? And um, Matt, how, how does Head for the Cure specifically support uh, our, our brain cancer research efforts? Sure. Thank you, Dr. Jensen. Well, I think there are so many ways that we, we have uh, achieved progress. And I, and I think that's, you know, the, the, on discouraging days, I, I uh, just like you guys uh, 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 wearing the white coats, the scientists, you know, we want to move faster. But on the most days, the encouraging days, uh, I'm, I'm proud of the, of the progress we are making, albeit incremental. And, and so much of that, you know, I think back on our first Head for the Cure and and when my brother Chris succumbed to glioblastoma, uh, the average life expectancy was, uh, you know, a, a bit less than a year. And and now, you know, five-year survivals has has increased dramatically. Uh, the uh, the the lifespan has increased, maybe up to 17 months or so on average. And I know averages are hard to even measure. And Dr. Arkavan can correct me in some of this. But but I also know that the quality of life is better. But the real encouragement is when I. You know, hearing Dr. Ackerman speak with such uh, uh, confidence, uh, but 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 not uh, uh, but but knowing that there's a lot of work to be done, and and I and I think uh, as I hear Dr. Ackerman and Dr. Jensen, you and I have gotten uh, become friends over the years. This balance of and you mentioned philanthropy with science, and I would break science down too. That that what I've discovered and, and so admire is how the, the researchers, folks like Dr. Akaban, who also are clinicians and, 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 and balance that relationship with the lab and with the patient. And, and, and that's, that's, uh, that's been really amazing. And I know it occurs uh, throughout KU Cancer Center across cancer disciplines, but, but uh, the one that I'm most interested in and the one that I dedicate my life to is, is brain cancer. And I, I really see that. And, and you can't separate it. You can't separate a patient's experience with this unexpected, unwanted, and, and tragically frightening uh, encounter with brain cancer from what's happening in the lab. And I, I, uh, I sort of characterize it, my, my 87-year-old mother who lost her youngest son and is one of the great supporters of Head for the Cure will ask me weekly, so what are you doing? Where are you going this week? What's happening? And the ultimate question she asks is, is there a cure yet? Is there a cure yet? Is there a cure yet? And, and that continues to be her question, and it continues to be the right question. Um, but my answer is no, but, but progress is being made every day. And, and I'm inspired by this today, even hearing Dr. Akavan's, again, confidence and, and and, and the new discoveries that, that are uh, exciting. And, and, and so for every patient out there and every caregiver and, and those who are living the legacy for those that have lo been lost in this disease should feel inspired by the work that KU is doing and other centers uh, uh, across the NCI designated landscape to, to advance treatment in a under-researched disease. And, I think it's important for organizations like Head for the Cure that sort of uh, provide some energy, I would say, to provide energy for, for science that's, uh, that's, that's working every day. And, you know, it's, it's pretty cool to be able to work together to do something that, that ultimately helps people. So, Absolutely, Matt. So um, you come across many um, cancer patients and, and their um, uh, families. What yeah. advice would you have, Matt, for someone who's just received a uh, cancer diagnosis, and and how can their family and friends, you know, best help them through that journey? Well, at, at the risk of sounding like a, like a, like a commercial, by the way, that's my life's work. But um, you know, certainly find your way to uh, to an academic cancer center, a National Cancer Institute center. KU is is ours in this area. 
uh, because it's it's where the docs that treat cancer patients uh, think and work in in these fields every day. And and again, as a as a uh, survivor, one that has dealt with it, uh, you certainly want to to uh, to seek the treatment and also the understanding, the empathy of of the entire landscape. You know, the docs, the the nurses, the researchers. Uh, 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 of all forms that 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 live and breathe uh, these environments. So that is first, of course, and 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 to uh, sometimes you know uh, while there's a sense of urgency always in uh, when when you hear the c word and and you want to move forward with great pace and you need to, but sometimes step back a little bit and you know to slow down to hurry up. You know I discovered that with myself and. And I think my brother Chris would would have that have that view, you know, find the right the, the the right environment with the right docs, with the right sensibility that are doing the right things to help you. And it's and and uh, and don't be afraid to ask the tough questions. You you, it's said often, but it's uh, certainly true. You have to be your own advocate. So, uh, but uh, and and have somebody by your side. You know, the, the caregiver, the loved one, um, in many ways is the most important. Uh, um, uh, you know, sort of sidecar to this whole experience. And I know uh, Dr. Jensen, Dr. Akban, you, you have very clear engagement with a caregiver when providing uh, guidance and direction and, and uh, uh, detail around treatment paths. So that's an important point too. Thanks. So we're uh, nearing the end of, of today's uh, episode. Have we uh, covered our uh, questions? We have a lot more questions. Okay. Are you, are you guys ready? Go but ahead. I've got brain cancer questions. I have some comments that viewers want to share. And then people have questions about um, head for the cure, head for cure. So um, my first one is a comment I want to read from Fanny. Fanny would like to honor her friend Chuck Stafford, who passed away from glioblastoma. So Fanny wants to honor Chuck Stafford. So many people's lives have been touched by this. Liz writes, please, please, please come up with a treatment soon to extend the lives of folks living with GBM, including my daughter, Kay, which is your life's work to find cures like that. Um, I do have a question. Uh, a lot of people want to know, how do you volunteer for Head for the Cure? How do you get involved? So they're watching and they want to do something. I think people are looking for ways that they can help if they're not doctors and they don't know what to do, but they can volunteer, right? Absolutely. Matt, Matt, you want to take yes. that question? Oh, I'm, I'm thrilled. And, and, and of course, so headforthecure.org is the best way. And, and, and we will get back to every inquiry. Our big event of, of the year in Kansas city, we do events through the year, but our big one is our 5k our annual 5k. One of the actually largest 5ks in Kansas city every year raises about a half a million dollars. It's held in late August. Um, uh, K is our is our sponsor and beneficiary, and we have 300 or so volunteers who come out. We also have events year round, so just reach out through headforthecure.org, and and we would love your support. And also, you'll see if you spend time there that uh, the comment about uh, about uh, uh, the legacy point of, of those that uh, go before. Uh, we have a a, a very uh, I think uplifting uh, memorial environment that uh, that provides the stories of lives well lived by people that have. Uh, it's another vessel of remembrance, and and it's for those that have that, that have passed from uh, from brain cancer. Uh, so we we recognize that that is an important part of what we do as well, and and I, I think mostly, uh, you know, head for the cure is a celebration. You know, it's. Uh, it's uh, it's full of energy and spirit and and uh, a richness of life and and uh, um, uh, I you know it, it, it's it's as I said earlier it's a, it's sort of a it's an honor to be able to 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 provide some guidance uh, through this organization and and help this community of people that are facing something so unexpected and uh, unwanted and and difficult but but my gosh uh, yeah I, I I will tell you that. That if you uh, if you experience a head for the year event, you will you will leave with a smile, and that's uh, that's the that's I think the, the the best thing I can say. I can absolutely vouch for that. I I think I've run in every single head for the cure race except for the first one and one when I was 
out of town at a at a site visit and and this year as as you well know i i won the uh, fat man's waddle uh division so <laughs> I, I was really now, proud now, of that jensen has he has cried so again we've done 19 years so dr jensen has has moved through various age groups uh through his uh <laughs> through his his head for the cure career and it's uh and uh yeah, I think, Dr. Jess, we have photos of you in every one of those. That would be a fun, uh, oh, a fun little I thing to see those photos. together. <laughs> <laughs> but Send we, them to and, us. And you no, know, that's the, that's, I, you know, it's really fun when, you know, the, the docs get out and, and uh, you know, lace them up and, and, uh, and get out of the, the, the clinic environment and experience sort of what, what, you know, the connection with patients is about. So, and Dr. Jensen, no one, no one, uh, shows up better than you so thanks so much for all that all right well as we're uh, uh close this episode out i, I want to hear from uh, each of you and and uh, dr akavan uh maybe we'll we'll start uh, wh what are you most excited about um for the future of, of brain uh, cancer research i'm excited to develop the groundwork to start um, car t cell therapy trials at ku and start bringing some of this technology and developing it and learning from patients and, and improving the therapy um, to, to, to bring, um, to bring uh, medical care at the highest level here. Okay. And, and Matt, any closing thoughts from you? No, no I, I think uh, I would echo what Dr. Akaban said. And, and uh, I, I also feel like Head for the Cure in particular, you know, we, we try to, to support patients today and we have an environment called brains for the cure which Kay is a part of that helps with uh, navigating the disease so if you're encountering it you know go to brains for the cure and you'll see some some guidance there dr jensen and several other videos are there but you know helping those patients who who are are looking for guidance today while we also drive funding to research through uh you know ku the translational program and Dr. Ackerman's research to ultimately defeat brain cancer. And we do it step by step, but ultimately uh, find a cure. So, uh, so that's, uh, that's the sort of the, the, the balance of, of helping patients today and also uh, ultimately solving this for tomorrow. All right, thanks so much. Sounds like we have another question. How much time do we have? You have to you have to go save lives. You both do. So I'll try to get. And if we don't answer all your questions, we will try to go back and answer them on Facebook as well. Um, a lot of questions about the Proton Therapy Center when that's going to be available to patients, and that's going to be early next year, right? Um, I, I think the best guess right now is is March of of twenty two. March of twenty two. Okay. Um, and then we have someone who needs to know or would love to know, this is a great question. Is there a brain cancer screening that you can get or do you just wait to have something feel like it's wrong? Unfortunately, there is no screening. Okay. For, That's for from that. Jill, it's a good question. No, no screening yet. No, no. Hopefully one day. Yes. All right, that's it for today. Uh, I wanna thank you both uh, for a great episode and thanks for uh, joining us this morning. To learn more about brain cancer, please visit KUCancerCenter.org forward slash brain cancer. That's all uh, for this morning's program. Join us next week at 10 a.m. for Bench to Bedside. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our Bench to Bedside podcast. Now everywhere podcasts are available.